Now, we met the frontal bone before, okay, and that sort of uh, that comes down across here. The bones that we haven't really met properly are these two nasal bones here. You can also see, I don't know if you can just see there, heading into the orbit, I'm not going to the orbit fully here, but this is the lacrimal bone with the, um, with the groove for the, uh, for the nasal lacrimal duct. Inside here is the nasal septum, and this is formed mostly, although by actually a uh, slightly more complex fusion of bones than this, but mostly by the ethmoid bone, which is also forming these, lateral, uh, these projections on the side of the, uh, uh, of the nose, and they're called conchi. This opening here is the external... Uh, is the sorry is the anterior nasal aperture and it's covered usually in cartilage and a little bit of fat to form you form the majority of the shape of the nose and uh, and the nostrils. Okay. Now this bone across here is the maxilla, which is bearing the the upper arch of teeth. And uh, um, the only specific feature that I'd like you to really note here uh, at this particular point is the super, uh, these these three foramina, this one, this one, and this one, all in a line. Okay. This is the superior and uh, sorry, supraorbital and infraorbital foramen, uh, and um, uh, and this is the uh, the mental foramen. Okay, and they all project uh, three important branches of the trigeminal nerve, which uh, which supply sensation to the face. Okay, so that's the anterior surface of the uh, uh, anterior surface of the skull. Uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but just in case I didn't, uh, I mentioned before the zygomatico frontal and the zygomatico temporal suture lines, those weak points um, for uh, if someone takes a blow to the face. There's a third one here, which is called the zygomatico maxillary suture, and these uh, sometimes you can get what's called a tripod fracture, one, two, three, where the entire zygo zygomatic bone, this huge, huge bone, gets depressed in, and it can sometimes compress on the eye. So. Um, that's uh, that's the anterior surface of the uh, of the face, and I said that the one other thing I was going to do was going to cover the mandible. So we'll finish off with this, and then we'll go ahead to our next video. So the mandible. This here is called the condylar process. Okay, the condyle of the mandible. This is the bit that articulates with the head. Okay, and the temporomandibular joint. Okay, the temporal bone and the condyle of the mandible. In front of this is a mandibular notch which takes us to a coronoid process. The body of the mandible is this flat bit here, and at this point here, the angle, it bends upwards and forms what we call the ramus. The ramus just means a branch in Latin, so this is effectively a branch of the mandible. Form. So that's it, how it's named. We, have, we mentioned before this mental foramen, which is where the, a branch of the trigeminal nerve comes out, and if we look on the inside surface, we can see where it comes through. So from the brain, which is sitting around here, the trigeminal, uh, the trigeminal nerve branches into a few different branches, and it sends one particular branch through this place. Okay? This is the mandibular foramen with a little projection of bone called the lingula. And it's got a canal that goes all the way down here, sending projections to the teeth and to the, uh, the gums, uh, supplying them for sensation. And it comes out on the front surface at the mental foramen. If we look at other features on the inside of the mandible. There is a line which is just across here, and this is the mylohyoid line. Okay, a mylohyoid is two muscles, one on either side that, that, um, that uh, sling down and meet each other in the middle okay, to form the floor of the mouth. And just above them are a couple of muscles that also form the floor of the mouth and the floor of the tongue, which, um, uh, which attach at these uh, bony projection points called the genial tu tubercles. Um, You'll, we'll come to meet uh, those particular muscles in a short while. I don't want to go into too much detail about them right now, but that's the bony projection points that are most relevant. So, for now, that covers us for, the, um, uh, for most of the uh, external skull. Now, what we will do uh, in a few moments is we'll start looking into the undersurface of the skull and to the inside of it, because this is where uh, people start to often get quite confused um, by, uh, by some of the uh, various... Um, by some of the various holes and, uh, go and pr uh, structures passing in and out of the skull. But for now, that will do us very nicely, I think.